Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to talk about full site editor, about how to check block themes and also I will show you some new types of block themes in GreenShift. But before we start, I would like to mention that we are going to work with the new interface which will be available with the version of WordPress 6.2. So, if you are using an older version, you will need to install a plugin which is called Gutenberg in order to have an access to the new interface. So, what's the difference between the block theme and the classic one? If we open the classic theme source code, we will see different PHP files here. So, if we open one of these files, we will see that it contains of different functions in PHP and also it uses various functionality on WordPress. On the other hand, if we open a block theme file, we will notice that there are no PHP files here. We have a folder called templates instead. So as you can see, in this folder, all the files are HTML. So let's open one of the files. And here we have a code with comments. And what do you think? What is this programming language? So in order to get this, we will do an experiment. So we will create a page and then we will add a whichever block. Then we will add, for example, a text and a style. So here is our text. Now we'll choose a cover for the background, like this, and a cover for the text. Now we should go here, we click on Options, and then we click on Code Editor. So as you can notice, here we get a code which is very similar to the one we had in the files. So let's copy it. And now we will try to add this code to our current theme. So we click here on templates and let's choose, for example, a front page. A front page is responsible for generating our main page. So here we paste the code that we have copied before. And now as you can see, this is the same block that we created in the editor. So this is the first advantage of block themes. In order to create block themes, you don't need to have an experience as a developer or something like this. You can just create such themes directly in the editor. These themes are called block themes because they consist of blocks that you create in the editor. So let's now check in details on how to edit block themes and block themes pages. So we need to go to appearance and click on editor here. And here is the first, let's say, big difference between block themes and classic ones. And very often people who deal mainly with classic themes are wondering why if they have set reading in settings here? Why is there a static page here, but it is not used? This option is not used in block themes. I don't know why it is still here in WordPress if activating the block theme, but all the pages of block themes can be edited here in Appearance and then Editor. Now inside Editor we have here Templates and Template Parts. So if we click on Templates we can see different kinds of pages. What we see here corresponds to what we have in our block theme folder here. For example, we have a front page in the folder as you can see and we have the same front page here in the editor. In order to edit it, we need just to click on the button Edit. And once we make some corrections and save them, this will be saved in WordPress database. 
This means that these files will not be changed. Instead of this, there will be created some database entries, but if you want to export all the settings and design, you just need to go to the options here and then click on export here. So once you click on export, you will download your theme with updated templates and styles and they will be saved in a separate theme. This way you can also create themes and then sell them. And when a user sets this theme, he will see your design, but at the same time he will be able to edit the parent theme if he wants. This is very convenient both for the buyer and the seller who has created this theme. Another important thing is that when you make some changes, you can click here on Manage All Templates and then we can see all the templates here. And the ones that have been edited will be marked this way with a blue circle. And if at some point you don't like something and you want to go back to the settings by default, you just need to click here and then click on Clear Customizations. Apart from templates, we have template parts here as well. As you can see, here we have these parts of the template that are common for all the templates. For example, header and footer. They are the same on each website and they are part of this tab as well. Both in templates and template parts, you can create your own templates that exist separately from the themes. For example, you can create a template part and here you can choose between general, header and footer. General templates are not tied to any particular area, while regarding header and footer, you can choose between several options and choose the one that you liked most. But we will talk about this later in this video. So let's now go back to the templates because most probably you will edit your website from here. And now we will look at what each of the templates is responsible for. So the first one is front page. Everything that you are going to change here is going to be displayed on the front page of your website. Here. Single is a template that enables you to use different layouts for different blog posts. Page is a specific type of template file that can be applied to a specific page. The next one is index. Index is a template that is used very rare. It's like a spare template for our archives. This means that if WordPress is not able to find a suitable template for output on a specific archive, it will use this index template. I use it very rare and I usually set it by default. 404 is the page that will be displayed in case someone has entered an invalid address on your website. Blank is a template that you can use to edit internal pages and I will show you this later in this video. Search is a template used for page search results. Also, there are some additional templates that are not used by default for our page, but you can add them to each page separately. So the first one is page without title. So if we go back to the dashboard here, and then if we click on pages, add new, then we add here some text like this. And then we have an option template here. By default, 
it is set on page so it will match what we have set here in the tab page but we can also change this and choose a different one we have blank and some additional templates so for example we choose this template page without title and then we add a text like this and then when we open it from here we can see that there is no title here meaning that we have used the template that we have here in the editor and it differs from the template page in that there is no title at the same time you are able to edit individual templates for the post page both here in the editor and inside the post so if we want to change something here we just need to click on edit and then we can make the changes once we are done we just click on save and here is the result and also we can do it from here so if we click on page without title then we need to click on edit template and we go to the editor but inside the post i prefer working in the editor here i just like the interface and the additional options that i have here but i think it's just a matter of habit also you can create your own templates to do this you just need to click on template and then you click on add template and this way we can create a new template this is how it looks by default but you can make some changes then save them and then use them on your pages so to see the contents of your template you need to click on document overview which is here and here is the structure of our template so we have a header a footer and a central part header and footer are our template parts meaning that we can edit them from here and regarding the central part here we have two dynamic blocks post title and post content in WordPress and in Gutenberg, there are several types of blocks, which are static blocks. So, for example, if I add a text here, like this, this would be a static block. I will save this template to show you how it looks later. And as you can see, here is our static text. And now if you add this template to another page, this text will be the same all the time. But apart from this, we also have dynamic blocks. So for example, post title and post content are dynamic blocks. Dynamic blocks differ from the static ones in that they are generated on the website itself. So, if we go back and add some content here then we update and now we open our page we can see that our content has been updated here as well and if we now decide to edit again our template we can see that the template here has also changed because post content is a dynamic block which is generated directly on the website and if you want you can edit here the design, but when it comes to the content, it will adjust dynamically. Apart from individual templates, you can also create templates for archives or rubrics of other virtual pages. So we go back to the editor. By the way, we can see here the template that we created directly on the page. It will be displayed here 
and we can also edit it. If we click on the plus here, we can see that we can create many additional templates to the different parts of our website. So for example, if we click on page, we can choose here the page for which our separate template will be created and which will work separately from the settings of the theme itself. So let's now create a custom template. For example, we can create a template for categories. We can create a template for all categories, meaning that it will be applied to all items and also we can create a separate template for a specific category. For example, we have categories here and let's say I want to make so that the page of this particular category has its own separate design, which is not similar to the rest of the category page. So to do this, I will need to click here on category and then I will choose blocks. Now we go to the template editing screen and here, if we want, we can change, for example, the color from here or, for example, we can add some new blocks. As we can see, we have dynamic blocks here, which are called query loop, and we also have archive title and term description. This means that everything that you add when you create a rubric, which is name and description, as you can see here, name and description, will match what will be added here in this part, which is called term description. As you can see, we can edit the design for each of the blocks here and also the design of each item. So for example, let's change the color of the titles. So let's now choose, for example, this color. And let's now check how it looks. So as you can see here, the color of the titles has changed. But if we open another page of the template, as we can see, the color of the title hasn't changed. It is black and it has been used in our template for the archive, which you can also edit, by the way. So I hope you now understand how to use the WordPress template system. We move on to the next topic, which is called global styles. In order to get an access to them, you just need to start editing one of the templates and then you need to click on styles here. So we get to the style editing interface and the first thing that we see here is that we can browse styles and use them for our website. They will be separate for each theme. So for now, we are going to use the style by default, this one. By the way, this is another difference of block themes from the classic ones, where usually all the website settings are here in customize or in theme options here. In block themes, all the global styles and settings are displayed here in styles tab. So let's now look at the first one, and this would be the color. Here we have a set of all theme colors, and if we point the mouse on each of them, we will see a small hint showing how they can be used, because each of the color can be used in a different part and template of our theme. So for example, if we click on the link, and then if we go to settings of the block, we can see that here was used a secondary color. And in order to change the colors, we can click on Show Details, which is here, and then choose the one that we want. 
As we can see, the color of all items that use the, this secondary color will be changed and this will be applied to the whole website. Once you have chosen the color that you want, you should click on Done in order to save the changes. But you can also click on Reset Colors and everything will be set by default. Also, in GreenShift theme, there are two colors that are quite dangerous to change, so be careful when you use them. These are Base Color and Contrast Color. They are responsible for the color that exists by default for the background and the text. So, for example, if we change them to the opposite color, so we will set white as a base color and black as a contrast color and as we can see our theme has changed to dark mode. If you want your blog to have a guaranteed color that is not related to the global color, you need to go to the background here and instead of choosing one of the colors here, you need to click on custom area and to add the color that you want. So, for example, I have this color here. The main thing is that it is a custom color and this means that the color that you add here will be absolutely the same even if you change the global colors. It is important to remember this in order to avoid some inconsistencies. Apart from this, you can also assign a color to the base elements of your website. So, for example, we have black color set for all the links. As you can see, these texts are actually links and they are black. So, if we change them, all the links of the website will be changed as well. But pay attention to the fact that the color of the links doesn't have a local value in the editor. So, for example, if I add a different color, the color that is a local for this element will be used. If there is no color chosen here, a global color that you set for your elements will be used. The next global option is Typography and it is responsible for the fonts on your website as well as the size of the font. Same as with Color, here you can set your fonts for the base elements. By default, text is the font that will be used for your content. The tab links is responsible for the links and headings for all the titles. There is one important thing here and many people are often having issues with it. And the problem is that there are both base elements that are here, but there are also blocks. And here in blocks, we have also, for example, headings. So how to figure this out? Base elements are what you have on your page regardless of the blocks. So, for example, links can be both in a block and in the text. I will show you this now. So, I will add a text here. Like this. And I will mark a part of it and then transform it to a link. Like this. So, this area is responsible for the base elements. Here, there is another area which is called blocks. And it is responsible for the specific elements on your page. For example, if we have a heading, this option will be responsible for the titles in the blocks that are called titles. Here it is. So, if I add a heading, like this. What I change here, for example, I will choose here light, 
it will be applied to this heading only, but this option will not apply to other blocks. So, for example, we have here post title here, and we also have used a title here, but this option doesn't have an effect on the titles in this block. I hope this is now clear. Nevertheless, for the elements like headings, links, and text, I would suggest you to set values in both sections, both for the base elements here and the specific blocks here, because some plugins, including GreenShift, will use and will inherit the styles that you have chosen for the base blocks by default. If for some reason these styles cannot be found, only then the styles for the base elements will be used. In GreenShift theme, there is an additional unique option for the typography that allows you to use your own custom fonts. In order to use this option, you need to go to Appearance here and then click on Theme Options and here we have GreenShift theme options. So here we can choose a font. By default, there is only one available font. It is called variable font, but also you can upload your own fonts. To do this, you need to go to GreenShift and then click on settings. And here we can see local font loader. Here there is documentation and if you want, you can check on how to use this option and how to upload many other fonts. I have uploaded one font and I will add it now. It's best to use files WOFT2. They are the lightest and it's easy to use them. And then you need to add a name to your font and it should be the same as in the font itself. I have downloaded it from a website, so I'll just copy the name from here and I will click on save. So as we can see, the file is now uploaded. We can also download it or remove it if we want. And now we will go back to appearance and theme options, and we can choose this font from here. So here it is. Then we click on save the options. And then we go back to the editor of our website and now it is very important to refresh the page so that our font is applied. So as you can see, some of the fonts have changed. These are the fonts for the base elements. It doesn't have its local fonts and you can make sure that it is true by clicking here and as you can see, our font is missing from the typography, but if you want, you can add it. When we don't have local fonts for the elements, the global ones will be used. And if we go to typography and then if we click on headings, we can see here that we have primary theme font. And this is what we have here in font options. But also, if I want, I can change it back to system font, change it to primary, or click on secondary. And in this case, will be used the one that you have set here in GreenShift theme options in secondary. So if you want to change your main font for the website, first we need to go to GreenShift, then click on settings and upload it from there. Then we need to upload the font here in font options. And after that, we can make some changes in the editor, both for the base elements here and for the specific blocks here. But most often you will need to change first your font in the text 
links and headings. And after that, in blocks in heading and site title here. So as we can see, now a secondary font is used, but we can change it to primary if we want. Usually I don't change the font in other blocks because most probably in other blocks will be used the options that you have set here in base elements. So as not to get confused in all this diversity about the base elements and the block elements, as well as all these settings, in WordPress 6.2 will be added a very helpful option, which is called Open Style Book. So when you click on it, you will see how all your elements and blocks are displayed on your website. And if you make some changes in the settings here, then all the settings will be applied here too. So for example, if I change here in blocks, then headings, typography, I will change the font to system font. You will immediately see how it's going to look like on your page. And the last global option is layout. You can set here the dimensions for your content area the padding on the left and right side, as well as the block spacing. So the width of these options will be used on your content. So by default, the width is 748. And also in some blocks, there is an additional option, align. And if you click on it, you can choose white width for example, which is 1200, like this. And it corresponds to what we have here set for white. So let's now move on to the next part that people usually have troubles with, and it is editing our website header. This can be done by editing the header itself from here, or by editing the template itself from here. So when we click on edit, you will see that the header will be highlighted in purple. This means that this area is a global one and when editing it, the other templates will also pull up this area. Here we have only two global areas these are footer and header and the first thing that you will most probably change is the logo of the website by default here is the title of the website but in order to upload the logo you just need to add a block which is called site logo then we can add an image so here is our logo and then we can change its size. And then we can delete the title so that only the logo is visible like this. Also, very often people are wondering how to put our logo here in the icon. So to do this, we need to go to the settings and here there is an option which is called use as site icon. Also, we can enable this option which is link image to home, meaning that our logo will be the link to the site. Another option that is available here is hide on mobile. So why do we need it? If your logo is too big, it will take a lot of space on mobile devices and most probably it will get outside of the screen. So in such a case, you can enable this option here, which is called hide on mobile. 
and the logo will not be displayed on mobile devices, but all other elements will be displayed as previously. The next popular question that arises is how to apply the effect which is called sticky header. So sticky header is a common pattern for keeping the header of a website or app in the same place on the screen while the user scrolls down the page. This option is not available on all the themes, but in GreenShift it is available and in order to use it, you just need to click here on edit. Then you need to make sure that you have marked the parent group and then here in settings, you go to advanced and here we can see this option which is called stick it to head on scroll. Also, you can choose a color which will be added while scrolling. So, for example, I will choose this color. And this is how it works. So when I start scrolling, as you can see, the color of the header has changed. If you need to change the dimensions, you can do this from here. Like this. Also, you can add another popular effect when the header is transparent and there is a background of the site that will be applied on the header as well. So we need to go back to the editor. We click on the header and here in advanced options, there is an option which is called transparent header. In order to better show how it works, we will go to our front page and then we will enable this option. I will change the background of the page to blue. Like this. And as you can see, the header is on the top of it. Most often it is used together with the background changing to a specific pattern. The next thing that you're going to change is menu and now in WordPress the menu is the most inconvenient part but nevertheless it undergoes some changes and it is getting better. So for example in 6.2 version there will be available a new way of adding a menu but for now everything that you need to do is just to click on the menu and add here some positions. So we can move the toolbar from here to the top like this. Now it's much more convenient and in order to add a menu you just need to click here on the plus and you can add a link. You choose here your link and this way you can add a menu. If you need to add a submenu, you just need to click here on the left side on Add Submenu. Themes in GreenShift have additional menu options, like for example Mega Menu. So the first one is Mega Menu Output in Simple Columns. By default, they are located one under the other, and we can see this here. But if you want it to be displayed as columns, you just need to go to the menu and to click on the option which is called Mega Menu Open in Left. Here. You can do this from the left to right and from right to left. Moreover, you can add a full Mega Menu and you can check on how to do this on our documentation.
So here you can go through the tutorials as well and you can find a lot of detailed information. So let's now create our mega menu. So the first thing that you need to do is to install GreenShift and then you have here a tab which is called Reusable Templates. We need to click on Add New and here we have a preset menu. So we click here on GreenShift Helpers and we can choose from the templates. So let's choose, for example, this one here, and then we need to click on import. So now our mega menu is just a set of different sections, but you can add here absolutely any content that you want. And then you just need to click on publish. Then we go back to all reusable blocks. And here we need to copy this short code. As well as the hover trigger. There is a hover trigger and also there is a click trigger, but most often a hover trigger is used. So we go back to our menu here and then we'll add a block. Here for the URL, you can add a special link starting with this symbol, this one. This means that the link will lead to itself. And in advanced options, you need to add the trigger class. This is actually the short code that we have copied from here. Now we'll copy this short code as well, and then we'll add a submenu. We'll name it Mega Menu, like this. It's very important to name it exactly Mega Menu. It will not be displayed on your website. It is just to indicate that this is a Mega Menu. And the last thing that we need to do is just to paste the short code here in the description. Then we click on save and here is the result. So as you can see, everything works well. And in future, this block will be improved as well. And in this video, I have just showed you what we have at the current moment. Also, if you have installed GreenShift plugin and GreenShift theme, then you will have an access to an additional option which is called Night Mode. Here it is. And it will switch your colors from base color to contrast color. As you can see here. And the next important thing is that in each theme and also in the plugins, there are many preset patterns. In order to add them, you just need to click here on the plus. You can see it on the top here. And you will see the available patterns. There are preset headers and footers that you can also edit in future if you want. Also, when you click on the header, you can click on replace header here and check the available patterns for the header. There are a lot of options here. The same can be applied for the footer, 
So you just click on the footer and then on replace footer. And here there are preset templates for the footer that you can add and edit then if you want. And the last thing that I want to show you today about the full site editor is the option to edit the style for mobile devices and tablets. And in order to check how your website is going to look like, here there is a button which is called view and you can switch to tablet or mobile view. Unfortunately, in WordPress blogs, there is not an option to edit it separately so that for the group blog, if you are using a green shift theme, here in advanced options, there is an option which is called hide on des desktop, hide on tablet or hide on mobile. But it's better to use blocks for green shift because all the blocks can be edited separately for each resolution and this makes you more flexible. This is all for today, but if you want to get more about Site Editor, there is a very helpful article on WordPress about it. So you just need to Google it. Here it is, the first one. And here it is described in details everything that we went through today in this video. That's all for today. See you in our next video.